on a personal level, um, you know, it's impacted me uh, deeply. Um, and only just recently, and having gained a few years of experience being now 45, that um, it was probably a little bit more unconscious um, about why I and so many of us feel so driven to facilitate, support, uh, and impact positive change for our people. And so when I do this work and I spend time with, with kids, for example, um, I was recently in northern Manitoba visiting with a 10-year-old boy in a 10 by 13 foot room with slop pails out in the front porch with no running water, no electricity. Um, he had a spark in his eye and a dream that he was holding for his life and for the future. And getting praised by his grandfather about doing well in school, um, it was like I was talking to myself when I was 10 years old. Uh, a time when I saw entire homes go up in flames, uh, entire families perish, when I witnessed and uh, we had uh, family violence in, in our community, um, deep dysfunction, alcoholism. Um, lots of my friends didn't make it uh, past the age of 20, 25, 30. Um, didn't have a chance to have moments of healing and reconciliation with parents, the likes that I have that privilege to do now. Um, aunts and uncles, all of whom went to residential school, sharing moments of laughter as well as tears and talking about a, a future. And all, all holding memories of a late grandmother who um, saw all 17 of her kids go to residential school. And one personal moment that I will never forget is sitting in the gallery in the House of Commons when the Prime Minister offered the apology to her and all the de all generations of residential school survivors and she says, grandson, they're just beginning to see us. She laid out for, for me and for all of uh, her children and grandchildren. Um, she said, um, you know, uh, I was a fighter all my life. I raised my kids to be fighters. We don't fight our fight with our fists any longer, um, she told me. We fight our fight with education. The idea that learning is going to spark the real human potential for healing and reconciliation between each and every one of us. All of which is underscored with a reconnection with land, with, with ceremony out in the lands and waters where I come from. This is what's happening not just in my family. I get the chance to see this in families in our territories from coast to coast to coast. No question, still deep trauma, deep social ills, intergenerational. I also see patterns being broken. Um, like my kids who are in their 20s, educated, forging their own way in life making contributions back to our nation so that the next generation is somewhat less encumbered, less burdened uh, with the hard work of healing and reconciliation because it is hard. So many of us um, have also created incredible resiliency that is now beginning to be expressed in so many ways. And I believe our, our, our survivors of our residential schools, I was, um, I was spared from having to go in our territories. Um, but I experienced um, very many of the same impacts uh, and, and effects. But I'm proud to work with those in my generation to say it stops here in this generation. We will stop the pain and suffering. We will stop the intergenerational, interfamily hurt. We will find ways to overcome divisions that we didn't create. We will work to bring back our languages and our teachings. We can do that in individual ways every single day. Uh, and every individual has a power to impact and affect change. It's not up to a singular leader or a chief or a minister or a person in a church or a business. It's up to every individual is what my late grandmother left me with. I think the work of reconciling is going to go on for a long, long time. Um, the truth-telling is happening now. We have to capture the record. Uh, in order to heal and reconcile, we need to understand the truth. and we, we need to have this moment of reckoning that I believe we're in right now. So I'm very thankful, full of gratitude for the leaders who've come before me, for the elders who've opened up um, their hearts and are telling the stories that is so difficult. The only way through the grief, as they say, it's like a forest, the only way is through it. And we're in that moment now, we're going through it. Holding hands and you know, sharing tears for sure, anger and frustration, um, fear about what the future might hold. But uh, as my aunt was saying, um, it doesn't feel like we're alone anymore. Um, that's what it's felt like for so long. Uh, like my late grandmother said, they're beginning to see us. We're beginning to see, in fact, one another. That's the power of the moment that, that we have. Uh, we need the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Like we need all of the grassroots groups that are holding events uh, like the one in, in Toronto. Um, these, this is just led by people with a deep and, and sincere, passionate commitment 
uh, to see uh, better relationships between uh, fellow human beings. And that we're having these discussions give me a great sense of, of hope and optimism that if I ever become a, a grandparent that that generation will be supported to grow up and um, maybe feel less compelled for the need to pursue leadership roles, including jobs like the National Chief. And we'll be able to follow passions the likes of which I had as a youngster to become a chef. Why? Because the work of reconciliation is well underway. And the work of leadership, uh, you know, uh, the, the focus begins to shift perhaps in the decades or, or years to come. But I believe the work of reconciliation um, will be with us for a long time and we must remain uh, relentlessly uh, committed to it. Uh, the work of reconciliation is going to require uh, for us to go deeply into the truth. Uh, to make sure that the support the TRC's work to not only hear it, record it, but also that every First Nations, every Métis and, and Inuit is supported uh, in their education uh, around um, what we've all inherited, the, the deep challenges, but also all Canadians. Uh, this, in fact, would give effect, give rise to the very reason for the treaty making that happened early on in the relationships between First Nations and those who settled in what is now Canada. And we can recapture the very best of that, which is about a relationship. And uh, as, is, as is famously said, you know, you tell me and I'll forget something. Teach me and I might remember it, but include me and I'll understand. It's time that we return to a place of, of real understanding so we can, we can advance healing and real reconciliation, not only socially, uh, but politically, economic, um, and cultural as well.